X-Men 268. I've been wanting to go over this issue for a while now. But when it comes to my older X-Men comics, I'm very reluctant to keep taking them in and out. So whenever I find reprints like this, I've got to pick them up, A, so I can share them with y'all. And B, I put these in my kiddo's collection when I'm done with them. So that way, when he gets older and he wants to read X-Men, he has his own copies. And if they get banged up, yeah, banged up comics are sad, but at least it won't destroy the originals that I'm holding on for when he's older, around my old fart age. Now, for those of you that kind of get confused, and this took me a while to sort of get this all straight in my head, this comic takes place after, ugh, what is it? Is it 240, 240, or 250? One of the two. It's the one where Wolverine's hanging on the cross. I get the number, or the wooden X, whatever. I get that confused, but in that, the Reavers went to attack the rest of the X-Men in the Australian Outback. They escaped back through the Siege Perilous, and that was kind of the last time that we really saw any of the X-Men. The only one that did not go through the Perilous was Logan, because the Reavers captured him and tried to crucify him, and Jubilee saved him. Now, this is where the... X-Men kind of scattered all over the place. And I enjoyed it because we get to kind of see what would happen if Peter didn't know if he was a hero. Storm ended up as a little uh, girl. And that's how she met Gambit. Psylocke ended up in the grips of the Madripoor. Brainwashed and her body transferred to Quanon. And that's how we got the ninja Psylocke. So Wolverine went down to Madripoor Jubilee to save her from uh, Shinobi Shaw. I think it's Sebastian's son's name because he was uh, predominantly in, in Madripoor at this point. But again... I'm digressing. <laughs> this is an epic issue. The print date on this was September 1990, so let's dive into it. Madripoor, in the late summer of 1941. In times to come, he'll make moves like this without a second thought. Fear balanced by a cool awareness of his own capabilities and a lightning-quick, uncanny, accurate assessment of his foes. But that's then. This is now. In the thought bubbling treacherously across the base of Steve Rogers' skull as he launches himself into the face of what, for anyone else, would be certain death, is how could he have been a dunce enough to willingly volunteer to take on the mantle, the star-spangled sentinel of liberty, Captain America. And we get these amazing Jim Lee pencils, gorgeous Gorgeous composition here, and one of those just timeless covers. And then we are immediately treated to a gorgeous splash page as Steve Rogers in the early years rips through the hand, thinking that they are normal individuals. But as we all know, the hand is just one of those very nasty organizations, and they just start to tear through Cap. Now, before we can go further into this, let's talk about who wrote, or should I say created, Madripoor Knights. This is Chris Claremont writer, Jim Lee Pensling, Scott Williams, Inc., Glynis Oliver doing the colors, Tom Orzanowski doing the lettering, Bob Harris was the editor, and Tom DeFalco, editor-in-chief. Big, big names on this book. And it just shows in these pages, God, do I miss work like this because it was 1990 just now digital coloring and all that stuff was starting to become a thing but still you really had to what do you call it rely on traditional and know-how and it is on display here but now when we think that cap is going to get the killing blow enter wolverine music to my ears bub step right up be the first in line to meet your ancestors Hope, hope you don't mind some help there, stranger. Plenty to go around, but I wasn't in need of it. True enough, and much appreciated. Never fought anyone like these before. Combat style takes some getting used to. I'll know better next time. Good for you. Always providing you get a next time. It's just great work here, because, again, these two don't know each other. Cap is still naive. In that sense, he has that naivete about him. Of course, Logan at this point is battle-hardened. <laughs> He's like, thanks for the help. I'm Captain America. Do tell. I like the suit. Just the thing for playing it sly and sneaky. That isn't my style. I'm supposed to be a symbol. Never met one of those before. I'm just a guy. Name's Logan. Welcome to Lowtown. So even though the cover says 
Captain America, Black Widow, and Wolverine back together again for the first time. From what I understand, this is the first team up with Captain America and the Avengers. And I just love how we turn the pages again. It says 49 years later. And we just see Natasha ripping through the hand. But she's kind of running into that same instance that Cap did. Teach me to go uh, on a caper without backup. Funny. Maybe even fitting for things to end like this. Almost where they began. You want me gaining? Be prepared to pay the price. That sound. Ancestors. No. And then I just love how the youngness, just the energy of Jubilee, batters up, scuds, play ball. Pew, 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 pew. One round of Jubilee fireworks, grande guaranteed to flash blind every bad guy in the place. And I love this team up. I, I kind of wish that this would have went a little bit longer with Jubilee, Psylocke, and Logan. The renegade Psylocke. Since I see telepathically as well with my mind as my eyes, that poses no problem for me. Thought I made this clear a long time ago, Gaiman. Madripoor is my turf. You aren't welcome. So we can kind of start to see how these two stories start to line up where Natasha's been the Madripoor before, Cap's been there, etc. so forth. But Natasha's wounded. She needs help, which cuts us back again to the past. And we see how Logan's just ripping or not should I say ripping, but, you know, he's in the princess bar. And he's just given the bit, the business to these Nazis. And it's just absolutely funny to see the ways that him and Steve Roger handle these guys. And then this character, I cannot remember my name, to, her name to save my life, but apparently she was the owner before, Tiger Tiger. And she's one of those ones where it says that, you know, dynamite comes in small packages. And she's basically kind of telling these uh, uh, SS guys to take a hike. And then Logan goes to leave and she goes, going somewhere, shorty? Back to my table. By rights, I should toss you into the street on your knuckle keister. You know the rules, Logan. Wasn't my fault. Please. Whatever you have planned, take it outside. I won't have my place wrecked. Or my customers put at risk. For you or anyone. Yes, ma'am. Don't sass me. I mean it. Don't doubt it for a minute. <laughs> I just, I love the relationships with Logan like that, where he's just, he respects the people enough, and they respect him enough to where they can kind of give each other crap. Now, what happened is the Hand has, in the past, has taken this little girl. He goes, the information comrades just believe I can provide. It's probably why those assassins were trying to kill me. Baron Strucker, one of the Reich's top operatives, reporting that Hitler himself has abducted a young girl left in my charge. Natasha. Romanoff. And then we cut to the future, and then we kind of understand why Natasha and Logan are really close in this sense. And she always calls, what does she call him? She says, uh, Big Uncle, or what is it? Hold on. Zzz. Little Uncle, that's what she calls him. And I just love how, you know, Logan's always close with all these people. And I sort of like how Jubilee says the quiet part out loud. He goes, Is it like. My imagination, or is everywhere old buddy Wolverine's got in the whole world, like some incredibly fabulous, gorgeous babe? Jubilee, it's impolite to pry. Somebody's got to look out for him. And I sure as heck don't trust it to be you, my is reading so-called ex-assassin. And since some of us ain't telepaths, Psylocke, we got to do it the old-fashioned way. What's this little uncle she keeps calling him? Oh no. Terribly precious, don't you think? Makes me barf. And just, I love Jubilee because she was able to be quirky without it being obnoxious like in a lot of modern comics, and particularly books like Windpool, Squirrel Girl, where it's like, oh my god, lol, that is so like adorable and like MySpace and Unicorns. I know that's outdated, but you get the point. The book is serious. Natasha gives Logan the reason why he's here. And so they all decide to team up. I don't, I'm purposely skipping over the plot because I want you guys to read it. The Fenris twins are the, let's see, one of them's called Fenris, I believe is what it's called. Let's go ahead and read it here because my brain's drawn a blank all of a sudden. The Struckers are on Madripoor for a meeting with a Japanese businessman named Matsuo Tur. You guys read the name. I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> 
And then, of course, Julie, major bad news, he's the hand's boss. Fenris and the young Jonan talk about an unholy alliance. Interesting choice of words. Logan, how long is it since we... Nigh on 50 years, princess. Her? That old? No way. Not a chance. Totally impossible. They're talking like ancient history. Do you think after all this time to try again? I'd rather know for sure. So let's find out. And then perfect way to beat back into the past. Ugh, the artwork. Oh my god, look at that. Just crash! I was thinking pretty much the same about you. And for the record, I'm Canadian and proud of it. And they finally save Natasha. We find out that she was a little girl at this time. Now, do you guys know, this is where I get a little confused. Does Natasha have like something that keeps her younger? She doesn't have the super serum like Cap, obviously. But I'm not 100% sure. But there's a reason they want to take Natasha. And it's very reminiscent to what happens with um, Kitty Pride. And I just I always love the Japanese um, themes that they put in the book. And as we go to a close of the issue, oh, the action just rips open on this party boat. And of course, Logan, Natasha, and then the past, Logan and Cap, all have a bone to pick. I love how Cap's here like, we're not out of the woods yet, partner, by a long shot. Assassins don't look too pleased that you killed their leader. Had it coming. No argument. But neither they nor Strucker's death. Death's head stormtroopers are about to let us leave without a fight. Their choice. Their funeral. And I just, I love how Wolverine doesn't even have to use his claws in this sense. He just goes into that berserker rage. Now, in a sense, all's well that kind of ends well. And it has a nice little happy ending, but there is still stakes to be had in the next issue. Awesome dual story being told in this. Gorgeous artwork and just entertaining all around and just shows how older comics, even though we call them classic comics. Now, this was the quality that we were used to. That's why a lot of times people say, okay, Boomer, or you're just holding on the nostalgia. No, no, we're not. We love traditional storytelling. And even though you can modernize it, as long as you use the same beats, you always end up with a classic story. That's why this book is timeless and is still considered one of the big books to this day. Even with just the cover, I mean, the story in and of itself is absolutely amazing. So if you all have enjoyed what you've seen, please first and foremost support your local comic shop. And if you can, grab an original copy. If not, they do have a reprint out with this foil cover, which is kind of cool, but I'm glad that I have the original. And if you've enjoyed this review... Really would appreciate it if you take a moment to hit like, share, and subscribe. Helps the channel more than you could possibly know. And if you don't mind hitting that fancy little X bell, next subscribe. That way as I get to upload content, you guys get notified. Come to the channel, and I love talking with you on hearing your thoughts and feedback down in the comments below or the socials, which I'll make sure the links down in the description. So with all that said, hope you all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading, and happy hunting, everyone.